I think I would have a heart attack if I went diving and saw them fish. Hello everyone and happy Pride Month. Yes, it's that time of month where we celebrate everything that is LGBTQ+. I'm sure they keep adding letters as well, I can never keep up. So in honour of Pride Month, I thought I would make a patchwork quilt with every single country that has legalised same-sex marriage. And this video was actually inspired by this comment here by Paranoia Princess. So thank you very much, Paranoia Princess. Also, I love the name. Now, I was going to make this blanket with every country who has just legalised being gay, but A, I think just being allowed to be yourself in the country just isn't quite far enough and B it would mean I would have countries like Russia on my blanket and they treat their gay people like absolute crap so they don't deserve to be on my blanket they really don't but this isn't about negativity this is about joy and celebrating the countries that have made the steps into trying their best to make every member of their population as equal as possible and I think it's quite a nice idea there'll be some people who disagree with us bring it on couldn't give a shit. Okay, so to start with this pride blanket, I cut pieces of different colored fabrics into squares in various different colors. And I also had to remember to keep the colors quite light and pastely because obviously I'm gonna be drawn onto them. I also left a border around them so I knew where I was going to be drawn inside of and also to leave outside space for a seam so I could stitch this all together. And yes, I'm pulling out all of the stops today. If you're familiar with my channel, you'll know that I'm awful at textiles and I'm not a particularly great drawer so I'm using two of these skills that I'm terrible at and making this blanket because that's how much I care it might not look great in the end but I don't care it's it's the thought that counts I also bought this collection of little embroidered flags that I'm going to stick on each corner of these squares of fabric to represent every single country that has legalized same-sex marriage obviously I could have drawn them or I could have made the little patches myself but that just wasn't gonna happen, it's, it's too much. But I attached all them flags off camera because it took absolutely ages. And now it's just time to create the individual drawings for each country. So for the Netherlands, I decided to go for a traditional windmill because they are quite well known for their windmills. And also tulips. I think that's their national flower and they're obviously very famous for tulips and growing them. They have just huge fields dedicated to tulips. And I don't think I've done too bad. I think my tulips could do with a little bit of work. But other than that, I think it says Netherlands. <laughs> Next up we have Belgium. And there are absolutely loads of things I could have done for Belgium to be fair. But I chose waffles. Surely that's common knowledge to everyone. Just waffles screams at us. As does chocolate. But I thought waffles would be easier to draw. And then I thought quite an unusual one was billiard balls and apparently according to the internet 80% of all billiard balls used around the world are manufactured in Belgium so I attempted to draw some billiard balls and quite frankly they just don't look like billiard balls at all to the the number 11 looks like an egg but again this is all about the thought it's the thought that counts the next country is Spain and for this I decided to draw a little festival that they have where they throw tomatoes at each other and have a tomato fight and it's called La Tomati I hope I've pronounced that right. And it happens every Wednesday on the 25th of August. And how unusual is that? People fighting with tomatoes. I, I don't know what the story is behind it. You're more than welcome to Google it. And then I obviously couldn't resist drawing a big jug of sangria because Spain's well known for their sangria. And I've been to Spain a couple of times and I have tried their sangria and it is delicious. It's very, very nice. I would highly recommend it if you ever go to Spain. And I think I've done a nice little job. I think it looks quite cute. I think my people drawing skills are just phenomenal. Next up we have Canada and it's obviously well known for their ice hockey so I had to draw a couple of people having a little match of ice hockey. Another thing Canada are very famous for is their maple syrup and I think the majority of the world's maple syrup comes from Canada. I'm pretty sure it comes from Quebec. So I drew a nice jug of maple syrup and I also finished the drawing off with snow because it is an incredibly snowy place. The next addition to my blanket is South Africa and I could have done loads of different exotic animals for South Africa but I settled for an elephant mainly because I thought it was the one that I could draw the best and I think I've done an alright job I think it looks like an elephant I would have loved to have drawn a rhino or a cheetah or something like that but it was just never gonna happen. It's way past my skill set. Next up we have Norway. And apparently in Norway you can actually see polar bears. I'm not sure whether this is accurate or not. 
but this is what the internet told me. So I drew a polar bear, or I attempted to draw a polar bear. And the internet also told me that Norway is very famous for their trains and that they have a really good train infrastructure there. So I decided to attempt to draw some trains. But quite frankly, my trains look worse than my polar bears. And yeah, I can only apologize, Norway. I think I did you dirty on this one. I just didn't do a very good job, did I? But I tried. I really did. And now we have Sweden. And for Sweden, I decided to go for ABBA because I think whenever you hear Sweden, you just think of ABBA and pop music in general. So I crudely attempted to draw the four members of ABBA onto the bottom of this bit of fabric, but they could literally be absolutely anyone. And of course, another thing when you think of Sweden is Ikea, one of the best stores ever. So I drew Ikea's logo on there too. And I think I've done an all right job. It's probably one of the most stereotypical ones I've done so far. So I can only apologize, Sweden. I'm sure you're famous for many, many more things than just ABBA and Ikea. In fact, I know you are, but that's what I settled on. Portugal's the next country to make it onto my pride blanket. And for this one, I decided to draw a lovely beach scene because apparently Portugal has some of the nicest beaches in the world. And I also decided to do a little mini golf course on the top of this drawing because apparently Portugal is one of Europe's most popular golfing destinations. Again, according to the internet. <laughs> next up, we have Iceland. And it was quite tricky doing the Scandinavian countries because I feel like they all have very shared interests and are famous for very similar things. So for Iceland, I decided to do Vikings, even though I know a lot of the other Scandinavian countries are well known for Vikings too, but I picked Iceland for this one. And I also attempted to draw the Northern Lights at the top of this piece of fabric, although it was incredibly difficult because I was using pens, but I think you get the impression that it's Northern Lights. So there you go, Iceland, Vikings and the Northern Lights. So for Argentina, I think I went a little bit further back in history for theirs and decided to go for a cowboy, specifically a gaucho. I think that's how you pronounce it. I can only apologize if I am pronouncing it wrong. And there were these colorful horsemen and cowhands who flourished from the mid 18th to mid 19th century and has remained a folk hero similar to the cowboy in Western Northern America. And I did try and get this as accurately as I possibly could. And I think I've done an okay job of drawing a gaucho, but I can only apologize if any of that information is incorrect. And I quite like my little cowboy. I think he looks great. I think he looks so cool. The next country that's gonna be on my pride blanket is Denmark. And Denmark are very well known for their colorful houses and they're very kind of wonky, unusual, different shaped houses. And also I didn't realize, but Lego was invented in Denmark. So I decided to draw a couple of little Lego bricks at the top of this. And yes, they are Lego bricks. I can assure you, they are Lego bricks. Next up we have Brazil. And when I think of Brazil, I instantly think of carnival. So I attempted to draw a lady with the kind of feathered headdress and the feathered showgirl kind of outfit in a carnival setting. And I put a lot of effort into this one, but I don't think it paid off because I don't think my carnival lady, she almost looks like a hybrid between a person and a chicken. So I can only apologize Brazil but I did really try. Next we have France, and I think France was a really easy one to do, because anyone who thinks of France instantly thinks of the Eiffel Tower, one of the most iconic buildings ever. So I drew the Eiffel Tower, which I have actually been on top of before. I visited Paris many, many years ago, and I can't remember whether I got the lift or the stairs. I think I must've got a lift. And then I also drew some grapes and a glass of wine, because they're very well known for their vineyards and their wine. And we all appreciate that, France. Thank you so much for our wine. Next up we have Uruguay, and it's a country I'm not particularly familiar with, but apparently they had the first ever World Cup in 1930 on the 13th of July. So I attempted to draw a little World Cup scenario. And not only that, Uruguay is very well known for their sustainable energy, specifically wind and hydro. So I decided to draw some wind turbines as well. The next country is New Zealand. And for New Zealand, I went for more of a political drawing because apparently in 1893, New Zealand was the first self-governing country in the world which let women have the vote. I also gave this lady a little speech bubble saying it's about time because if you think about it 1893 wasn't very long ago. And to think women couldn't vote, like that's just absolutely crazy to me. But obviously it did happen. And thankfully women's rights have come a long, long way since then. And I couldn't resist putting a little kiwi there as well because they're well known for the kiwi bird, but also their fruit. So there we have it, New Zealand. I, th I think I've done an all right job with this one. I'm quite happy with it. Okay, next up we have England. And I decided to split up the UK between England, Wales, Scotland, and Northern Ireland, as well as doing one for the UK 
as a whole because each country legalized same-sex marriage at different times. And also the way things are going at the minute, I feel like the UK might not end up being the UK for much longer. Everyone just seems to want to leave. And I want my pride patchwork blanket to hold up for years to come. So for England, I just decided to do Stonehenge because I thought it was going to be a very easy one to draw. And I was correct, it's just a few rocks. And I think Stonehenge is in Wiltshire. And I've never actually seen Stonehenge before in my life. And it's something I'd actually quite like to visit. So yeah, I think I've done a pretty good job of that one don't think I could have possibly screwed it up. And Wales, at the same time as England, legalised same-sex marriage. And for Wales, I decided to just do some nice hills with some sheep, because I'm pretty sure they're well-known for sheep and quite a hilly landscape. Although I've never actually been to Wales, I don't think I have anywhere. So hills and sheep Wales. And Scotland legalised same-sex marriage the same year as Wales and England did, but they just did it a little bit later in the year for some reason. And for Scotland, I just decided to draw a lovely scene of the Loch Ness Monster because I couldn't possibly get that wrong because I don't know whether it exists or whether anyone's seen it or whether it's just a myth and I made Nessie red because I just fancied it. Next up we have Luxembourg and I'm not particularly familiar with this country either but it's a European country well known for their forests and their money. It's a very rich European country so I decided to draw a little forest scene with a few bags of money there. Well done Luxembourg for being so rich. If you fancy you know sending some my way I, I won't complain. I'll happily receive it. Even if it's in Euros, I really don't mind. The United States of America is up next, and when I personally think of the United States of America, I think of NASA and space exploration, so I decide to go for a lovely rocket. And then also when you stereotypically think of the United States of America, you do think of fast food, so I couldn't resist but draw a big beef burger on there as well. I was in fact going to draw a bald eagle, but I can barely draw an elephant, let alone a bald eagle. So a space rocket and a hamburger is the best I could do. The next country to make it to my patchwork quilt is Ireland. And for Ireland, I decided to draw a leprechaun because obviously it's a very mythical creature that is well known for being Irish. And I also decorated it in some clovers because I think that's their national plant. And for some reason, I struggled drawing clovers. I think I mastered the leprechaun, if I'm honest with you. Who knew a clover would trip me up? Next up, we have Colombia. And for Colombia, I attempted to draw an orchid because apparently they have four 4,270 different species of orchid, which is the most in the entire world. And I was quite shocked at that. I didn't realize until I did this research. And they're also very well known for their coffee production and exportation. So I thought I would do some coffee beans and a nice big cup of coffee. Finland's up next. And Finland is the birthplace of Santa Claus. So I decided to draw a nice snowy Christmas scene with Santa Claus. And anyone denying Santa Claus isn't real, then he is. He's from Finland. We all know that now. Next up we have the country of Malta and apparently Malta, according to the internet, is very famous for their diving spots and is one of the most popular places in the world for diving. So I went for this lovely little diving scene and I think my diver, my ship and my coral look fantastic. My fish look an absolute mess. I think I would have a heart attack if I went diving and saw them fish. Next up we have Germany which is apparently really popular for their castles. Apparently they have a a lot of castles scattered around their country so I went for this nice castle little landscape and then I also couldn't resist but draw some sausages and some beer because of Oktoberfest where they drink lots of beer and eat lots of sausages. I think they call them bratwurst. In a fun little fact I can actually count to a hundred in German and I know more German than any other language other than English. I can't have a conversation to someone in German but I could probably understand little bits of what they're saying because I did German in school. Ich heiße Ant or Ich heiße Ant. I can't remember. That means my name's Ant, I think. I hope. Australia's up next and I was very ambitious with this one because I decided to try and draw a kangaroo and I think I actually did an alright job of it. I also attempted to draw a koala scaling a eucalyptus tree and I think as a whole it's quite a nice little drawing. I think it's very representative of Australia. Austria's coming in next and according to the internet they are very very famous for their classical music so I decided to draw a violin or 
or a cello or some sort of classical instrument with some musical notes around it. And I think it actually looks like a violin or a cello or some sort of classical instrument. I'm quite pleased with myself. The next country to legalize same-sex marriage is Taiwan. And Taiwan is a country that is very popular for manufacturing, specifically computers and computer parts, as well as bicycles. So I thought I would do a little drawing of a computer and a bicycle for Taiwan. And I'm sure Taiwan's famous for a lot more other things than just bicycles and computer parts, but I was struggling with ideas. A lot of countries overlap as well with what they're famous for and what they're popular for. And also, I don't know a lot about all of these countries. Ecuador's up next, and Ecuador is very famous for their Galapagos Islands. So I decided to do a little island picture. And also bananas. For over 60 years, Ecuador has been the world's leading exporter of bananas. I also drew a bunch of different flowers because Ecuador is the world's third largest exporter of cut flowers. So the Galapagos Islands, flowers and bananas. Next up we have Northern Ireland catching up with the rest of the United Kingdom. And for Northern Ireland, I decided to obviously go for the Titanic because the Titanic was built in Northern Ireland, if you didn't know. And I also drew a little mini version of the Giant's Causeway, which is a very unique natural rock formation made from layered basalt. And it's actually something I would really like to see one day. I've never been to Northern Ireland, but I'm gonna come eventually. But now that Northern Ireland has finally caught up with the rest of the United Kingdom, I thought I would do a United Kingdom patch. And the only thing I could think of that would unite the United Kingdom and come up with something that everyone could recognize the UK for would be a good cup of tea and rainy weather. I think that's very symbolic of the United Kingdom as a whole. Crap weather and a good cup of tea. Next up we have Costa Rica. And apparently Costa Rica is very well known for their volcanoes. So I decided to draw a lovely volcano volcanic landscape and it was a very easy one to draw I'm not gonna lie. And the next two countries to make it on my patchwork quilt I don't think have officially made same-sex marriage legal in their countries as of yet but it was quite patchy it was just a bit hard to research but I think they're basically there or really close to getting there so that's why I've included them as well. So we have Mexico I decided to go for a nice big bottle of tequila and I absolutely love tequila so I was very happy to draw this and I also went for a sombrero and some maracas and and I'm pretty sure that's quite symbolic of Mexico, but you're more than welcome to correct us if I'm wrong. And the last country we have is Switzerland. And obviously when you think of Switzerland, you think of the Swiss Alps. So I decided to go for a lovely mountain range. Also Swiss cheese and watches. Like so many different brands of watches are made in Switzerland, including like Rolex and stuff like that. They're the watchmakers of the world. And once I'd finished all of my drawings, which took me absolutely ages, I decided I would put even more effort in and I would hand stitch all of these pieces together to create my patchwork quilt. My sewing skills are definitely questionable, but they're attached, they're sewn, and I didn't hot glue it. And obviously I didn't record as sewing all of these patches together because I think it took me over a week to sew all of these. It took so long to make this blanket, but I'm gonna go get it and I'm gonna show you it now. I'm very proud of it. And here we have it, my patchwork quilt with every single country that has legalized same-sex marriage. And it is absolutely huge. And it might look a little bit rough around the edges and very handmade, but I'm very proud of it. And a lot of love went into this. And I have also left the sides very rough and ready because I wanted to leave space in case any other country decided in the future that they would like to legalize same-sex marriage and then I'll happily add you to my quilt. If that isn't motivation enough, I don't know what is. And I was actually quite pleased when I was going through all of these countries and realizing that they'd made these steps and legalize same-sex marriage. And although I'm a gay person, I never want to get married. I never want a civil partnership. I don't even want a boyfriend. I'm quite happy being alone. But it doesn't mean the fact that there are plenty of other gay people out there who do want marriage. And it might be a sensitive subject for some people, but I just find it difficult not creating every person equally and not treating everyone equally. And this is just kind of the tip of the iceberg, really. There are still 71 countries in the world where it is illegal to be a homosexual, which is just astonishing, really. And there are around eight countries in the world who still use the death penalty for just being a gay person. And it's just, it's, it's just so upsetting and so sad. And people try to justify it with religion or culture or 
something like that and it just it doesn't cut it it just it can't cut it at all and that is why we have pride month some heterosexual people wonder why we have pride month and why we don't have straight pride month and it's because straight people don't need a pride none of these rights have been taken away from straight people because they are straight and it happens to gay people all the time and it is just a constant fight and although a lot of countries have made a lot of progress and the world as a whole has made a lot of progress there's still so much that needs to be done and it hurts to think that if I was born in a different country I could have a completely different life where just me being me and just me existing would be against the law and could potentially mean I would be murdered for it. It's just, it's seriously, it's so sad. It makes me so sad. It really does. I'm very fortunate to be in the UK where we have more liberal rights, but the UK itself still has a long way to go in treating gay people the same as everyone else and to kind of stamp out homophobia and all of that discrimination that comes with being a gay person. Just a little chat about my experience being a gay person in the UK. I I have been attacked, I have been spat at, I have been called all the names under the sun to my face, behind my back and over a keyboard. I've had death threats before. I've just had all of these things happen to us just because I'm a gay person and just because I exist. And that's why we have Gay Pride Month. It's to celebrate everything that the gay community has done and also to create awareness of how much more we have to do. Not just for our own countries that we live in, but for the rest of the world. But I hope one day in the future, this won't be a conversation. This will just all be in history and it won't be an active thing. People will have just accepted it and acknowledged it and realized that there's always going to be gay people in the world. There's always going to be transgender people in the world. There's always going to be non-binary people in the world. We're always going to exist. I just hope one day it all changes, you know? And we're getting there. This blanket and this video is all to do with that. It's all to do with change and all to do with celebrating the changes many countries are making and there are still many other countries out there who are still making these changes and it's still going through laws and hopefully one day the entire world will just accept same-sex marriage and every single right for a gay person and that's all I have to really say I don't want to be too preachy but hopefully I have enjoyed today's video I know it's been a little bit different but I felt like it needed to be done if you did make sure to give it a thumbs up and I'll see you on Friday for a brand new video